Hi everyone, it's Kenzie Knox and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be painting Morning Glow by Joni Young Art and you can find her on YouTube. So let's get started. She's working on an 11 by 14 double prime canvas and I'm working on a 9 by 12 size canvas but it has not been primed yet so we can go ahead and add some titanium white to our canvas to prime it. So we're probably going to prime it twice. So you can grab your filbert brush, your flat brush, or any other brush, or any brush you're comfortable with. I think we're going to use our flat brush today. And we're going to go ahead and get that wet, and tap off the drips, and then pick up some paint. And then you could use a spray bottle if you need to. Um, that helps spread the paint really easily. dryer, whichever you have. Okay, so once that's dried to the touch, we can go ahead and add our second layer. in water and pick up your hair dryer or heat gun and start drying. Okay, so now we can start our painting. So go ahead and pick up your ultramarine blue and some titanium white. We're going to pick up our filbert brush, the largest one you have which is this brush for me. And we're gonna start adding some paint to our canvas. So take your brush and add some ultramarine blue and some titanium white and just start painting in the sky. And the sky is going to go down farther on the left than it is the right, so keep that in mind. We're gonna scoop our clouds downwards from the right side and it's gonna continue down as I'm scooping them down to the left. You're going to keep adding some white and blue until you reach a little past the halfway mark, the horizon mark. And this allows us to just create some clouds naturally and you want to leave some of those white spots showing just to show some clouds and some movement in the sky. But right here I'm showing you the mark where she brings her sky down till. And this painting, um, for the most part, follows along Joni Young's painting. However, I do diverge in some spots just because she's such a great painter and I couldn't really follow along and her instructions are not very thorough as this video I believe was more for enjoyment and pleasure rather than teaching or a tutorial for others to follow. Very beautiful painting but I just could not follow all of the steps along the way. So this is my interpretation of her painting, following, for the most part, her instructions. So I'm continuing with my clouds, making sure it clearly goes down from the right to the left. Okay, and now we can go on to paint our landline. So go ahead and wash out your brush thoroughly. So now pick up your quarter inch flat brush and we're going to apply some gold and some yellow ochre to our skyline. This is actually our landline, I'm sorry, not our skyline. And we're just um, drawing in diagonal with lines going down first and then lines coming towards us. Um, you should be starting from a center point, so it's almost like they're coming from right there. So from that angle, point all of these strands of land coming to and from that spot. 
so make sure your brush has enough water on it so the paint slides if not you'll probably have trouble spreading your paint it looks like they're all coming from that central point so we're just going to keep that in mind as we continue to paint the rest of the canvas with this color Once you're done this step, you can go ahead and rinse out your brush thoroughly, and we'll get ready for the next step. So now we're taking some jet black and some gold, and we're going to draw in some shadow lines now for the trees. And you can add yellow ochre too, because my gold is too transparent, I found. You might find the same thing with yours, and I'm not really sure. So now we're going to draw a land line. With, I'm using my quarter inch flat brush to do this, and so we're going to take that black and green color and just draw in a quick little land line at the top of the gold and yellow ochre and then we're creating a little land mass on the left you can see me going up just a little bit and this is just that black color and then a little green and then you have some lines um, now we're creating the shadow lines for the trees so they're basically coming in from the land and then coming outwards towards us so keep that in mind we're almost following the same pattern that we did before um, but they're not exactly coming from the center point. So imagine the central point is more in the sky than it is on the canvas on the land line. I believe we're gonna have around five or six trees, so keep that in mind as we're creating these shadows. It will help you plan out your pattern better than I did anyway. <laughs> At this point you'll see me flicking up some of the color. This was to create some texture and some grass, but I don't think I continued this throughout the painting because it broke up my paint too much, so you can skip this step altogether. So now grabbing our yellow, cadmium yellow hue, I'm sorry, 
she added yellow cadmium or cadmium yellow but her yellow ended up turning out a lot brighter than mine which i end up fixing at the end of this video so don't worry about that but if you want you can grab like a bright yellow or um, a whitish yellow color oh and we also need um hunter green for her sap green uh, but the yellow streaks of sunlight which i draw in with the cad yellow and white or maybe it's just cad yellow which i highlight the yellow ochre color and gold um, should be a lot lighter in color like a lemon yellow so using my quarter inch brush which is right here I'm going to be adding in some yellow um, land lines it's like hidden in the background some hay maybe or some fields and I'm also, this is where I'm trying to add in the sun streaks, which are not showing at all. It's just blending right on into the background. So I'm just layering that over the gold and the cad yellow, or the yellow ochre to brighten it up, but it's not showing like it should. Uh, again, you can use like a lemon yellow with some white. Uh, and we're also going to add sap green. Oh, right there. There we go. There's that sap green over that little mound of land. And then on the other side as well. Oh, and we're going to add some black in too, just to darken it. And so now I'm adding in um, some green to the shadow lines as well. So add green to the black. start on our tree. So using that green and that quarter inch flat brush, I'm just going to draw in some trees. And this might be a little bit of green and black mixed together, or I might come in with black afterwards. This is definitely just green. So I'm just drawing in some twiggly wigglies here. Um, a lot would be covered by a brush. And we're also going for a um, sort of blurry look. So when the sun comes at you, you can't really see everything clearly, and that's what we're aiming for. should be semi-black as when light comes at you the trees would be basically blocking out the sun and essentially creating a black sort of look to them.
if a medium, if you have some more matte brushes. Um, we're going to add in some foliage. So grabbing our green and gold, we'll go in and create some foliage. Not everywhere because we do want some of the sky to show, but um, just a normal amount of brush that would come with a tree. spots as well as some in the trees and some of the foliage. And so our sky didn't come down far enough. I'm creating this light blue baby blue color just to fill in the rest of the sky behind the trees. I didn't realize at this time that um, the land line should have matched the skyline. <laughs> I guess I should have seen that, but I didn't. Sorry, guys. But just fill in the spaces between the trees. And you can be loose about this because as the sun rays come in, we want the trees to appear like they're um, not clear, but yeah, we want them to be blurry. She takes her uh, small mop brush and she creates some foliage with some yellow and white. And I'd highly recommend skipping this step because I started creating it on my brush, my trees, and I uh, didn't really like it, so I ended up covering most of it up somehow. Taking my quarter inch flat brush, I'm adding some cad yellow or yellow ochre, I can't, it looks like yellow ochre, to uh, my brush on the left side or my land line. And I'm just building that up a little bit. And I'm darkening the base because it should stay around the black color, the black and green, remember how we had that? So I'm just putting that back down, building up some layers. And I'm continuing on over with that yellow to the other side. Oh, I'm sorry, green. <laughs> Oops. And building down the bottom layers and then building up to the yellow. Again, building layers. So now I'm taking my bright yellow, which is right here, and I'm going to create those sun streaks in the land that I told you earlier I couldn't build with the cad yellow as it wasn't bright enough or light enough in hue. Some black and green. I'm going to add 
the shadow as well. It just looked like a little empty on this side. Taking my number two flat brush, I'm just going to create some twigs in black um, for this tree. to the tree that I hadn't yet added the foliage to. And this basically covers up that gold yellow mess that I had behind it. I'm hoping it will at least. <laughs> And you can use a little liner brush here, you can use a quarter inch brush, whatever you feel comfortable with. Oh, and I'm adding some more green back here as well, just adding more brush in the background. This is different from what Joni Young does. Um, I'm only adding in these areas because some of her paintings I couldn't follow along with, and um, she's so quick with her paintings too, it's difficult to follow along. So this is just my interpretation of how I could create the similar effect to hers, um, yet not exactly the same. Taking some yellow, I'm going to highlight some of these back areas here. 
we're gonna add them here and over here, just on top of the brush. And taking that same white and yellow mixture, we're gonna go over to the other side and highlight that side as well. Looking at Joni's painting, it looks like her brush on this side, on the left side, is more minty green than it is yellow green. So now I'm just going over with that green and white mixture. Um, I just lightened up my green with just using white, so my, um, my hunter's green with some white. And I am going along the left side, although I believe her brush stayed more yellow and green than it did minty green. But I'm just highlighting and adding layers. green mint colors uh, just to fill in some of those spots where the sun rays are coming through uh, so you can't really see the sky and it's in between the brush uh, between the twigs and the trees um, branches <laughs> to create some more um, depth and more some dark shadows because I felt like that blob of green was just too much light green. you wouldn't normally see through the trees because the sun is so bright so I'm just filling that in with green with that light minty green color so now I'm going to add our sunburst and I'm just picking a spot uh, towards the center of the canvas and start creating these sun strokes that are uh, white and yellow that bright yellow I was talking about that lemony yellow color and they're just going to beam out from this spot right here and you can see I picked up some green in that last stroke and so I'll go back and fix that but be careful if your paint is wet, you could dry off your canvas before you do this part, or um, you could do it while it's wet like I did. point we have a finished painting. Joni now continues on with some grass highlights using her fan brush which I was not comfortable doing so I stopped at this point but you can continue on watching her video. I hope you enjoyed this experience as much as I have and until next time I'll see you guys later. Okay bye!